and uh, our next and last speaker for this session is uh, dr sohel sajid dr sohel sajid is associate professor at department of parasitology university of agriculture faisalabad pakistan he has supervised several masters and phd students and published a number of book chapters and manuscripts in renowned journals around the world his area of interest is molecular epidemiology and control of arthropods and arthropod born diseases of livestock and public health significance dear uh, dr sohel sajid please unmute yourself and uh, start the presentation thank you so much thank you um, mr bukhari for uh, introduction um, and i'm also acknowledging um, professor arijo uh, who was supposed to present here and i'm presenting on his behalf today uh, about ectopic bond diseases experience from uh, pakistan and usa uh, need not to emphasize what ticks are because what has been talked about, about ticks uh, they are causing biting nuisance paralysis uh, anemia they are causing uh, physical damage uh, and uh, Um, most importantly in it, as far as the economy is concerned they are causing disease uh, decreasing the production of milk industry in in uh, uh, in the livestock and uh, they also uh, kind of uh, making a, a co-infection with uh, other ectoparasites and endoparasites in the community when we talk about tick borne diseases of uh, in one health scenario they, they, the the boundaries are going beyond uh, bacteria it, it includes viruses it include rickettsia and uh, as well as protozoa like uh, babesia thyreia uh, uh, are there and um, uh, the, the bad thing is that they are uh, cosmopolitan in distribution and uh, can act as a, a successful vectors for their communication uh, or transmission across borders Uh, this is a bit older version of from who which is indicating the geographical distribution of tick to tick borne diseases and uh, we can see that the orange colored uh, structures are in pakistan so uh, they are around 5000 to 12000 cases reported per year uh, in our region and uh, the boundaries are also indicating uh, red colors where the probability of uh, infection is, is much much higher and uh, the yellow colored are at risk to to get more and more infections uh, from the orange and red red colors areas uh, uh, dr sohel sajid i i'm sorry to interrupt i think your screen is not uh, working uh, i think you are changing slides but they are not appearing on our side just yes, now it's okay. Um, sorry so is it visible now yes it is visible now and is it changing no it is not changing we are we are just seeing the slide number 7 uh, okay the slide shows microscopic examination yes okay so if i change to the next one it is molecular biological techniques no you cannot see sure but there is a problem so let me just go back to the uh to the other view let me uh, i'm sorry for that i think you can turn off the presentation mode then it would work uh, yeah that's what i did i'm just doing it once more time do you see any change now no we can't see any change we can see only the slide number 9 the molecular biological techniques yeah that's what i'm doing i'm i'm let's let's uh, so the, this slide shows geographical distribution of tick and tick borne diseases can you see the map of who no we can't see sorry i don't know what's the problem but anyway uh, so let's just um, i'm not sure it it works routine routine very well but i don't know what's the problem maybe i'm keep and i don't know how to sort it out see So let's just uh, talk yes, a little bit about now it's now now it's working we are at slide it's, number 23 okay. yes okay perfect slide number 23 so yes. let me move back so it's not just uh, i was actually intending to skip this already 
All right. So the molecular bio, uh, other than conventional methods, which I listed over here in this slide uh, that we are doing in Pakistan about, we are relying upon history of, of the patients. We are relying upon the signs and symptoms, post-mortem lesions, and uh, uh, about the, uh, the microscopic examination of the host blood and hemolymph from the vector. We are uh, working something uh, on molecular methods, which are based upon uh, two different streams, either they are protein-based or nucleic acid-based, uh, cytological assays or amplification assays. And we have a lot of uh, detailed concepts about cytological techniques. So this was the content I was intending to skip so that we can move towards the um, experiences in Pakistan, so what we are doing right now. So the routine diagnostic protocol of tick-borne diseases at, uh, in our lab at Molecular Parasitology Lab in the University of Agriculture, Faisalabad, that is relying upon um, the sample collection from the field, whether it is, uh, it, it, so in this slide, I'm trying to present that what we are doing with the specimens. And uh, these ticks are subjected to uh, the dissections uh, in order to uh, uh, isolate the cyber glands and mid guts. Uh, so that we can refine uh, the tissues and uh, target uh, the contents which we are in that. So um, from the saliva gland, we are pulling and extracting the DNA. And uh, they are, uh, the, that DNA is subjected to PCR based upon our target uh, pathogens. And right now, in our lab, we are focused on uh, babesiosis, chloriosis, anaplasmosis, and rickettsiosis uh, based on the uh, the 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 prevailing situation in our country and uh, the reports which were available uh, that these diseases are uh, epidemic in, in, in our region. Uh, and then these after the PCR uh, gel imaging is being done and the, the samples are uh, sent for, to, to the sequence for, uh, for confirmation of um, sequences and followed by their phylogenetic analysis and uh, making, the, making the trees to, to go for um, uh, homology, homology search from the, uh, from the data bank. As far as the, the tick identification is concerned, we are going for two methods. One, one is conventional method that is always a gold standard as, as, as uh, so far in resource poor communities where we do not have so much um, uh, funds for uh, molecular methods in routine. But uh, yes, we are also trying to move towards molecular methods by um, going for um, uh, the, the barcoding of, of, of the tick specimens using the molecular techniques, which is conventional PCR. So one of the project is ongoing, which is uh, a DNA barcoding based uh, taxonomy of the ticks in uh, various agrogeoclimatic zones of uh, Punjab, Pakistan. Regarding the blood samples, again, uh, blood is uh, subjected to two different uh, sections. One is conventional method, where we are again uh, targeting uh, the specimens for uh, for the dissection, and those dissected specimens, uh, fibre glands are subjected to staining. And uh, the, the the developing stages of the parasites like Babesia and Caleria, which are sitting inside the SNI of the glands, they are being uh, identified using various com comparative uh, stains or uh, contrasting stains. Uh, and secondly, the molecular ways are always there to, to help us out to identify using the same approaches that I detailed uh, just right now to identify various kinds of pathogens in the, uh, in the blood, uh, in, in, the, in the hemolymph of, uh, of the vectors. And then uh, we are also uh, trying to, to find out the, the quantitative burden of uh, various pathogens in, in these ticks. Uh, from various zones of um, uh, Punjab. So uh, again, blood is subjected to uh, smears, and, uh, and then it can be subjected to um, uh, to the molecular pathogens can can be identified from the host blood to uh, to identify the the final stages of uh, of the parasite within the bloodstream, uh, and the presence of ticks on the body, and then presence of uh, uh, parasites within the host blood could be kind of a gold standard where we can see that these can be can act as uh, as a vector. But surprisingly, sometimes what we found is that uh, the uh, the host was uh, infected with uh, more than and one vector, like the, the ticks were not the only um, ectoparasites infecting uh, the animals. There were uh, there were fleas, which were uh, belonging to uh, this, the genera Unicephalides, uh, and they were parasitizing uh, 
uh, the uh, the hosts which were suffering from pyroplasmosis. So that gave us a clue that probably uh, fleas could be a probable uh, a vector for a transmission of pyroplasmosis in our region. And we published one uh, one paper where we, we found concurrent infection infestation of ticks as well as uh, fleas uh, in animals suffering from pyroplasmosis. Uh, these were sets of primers that we use in routine for pyroplasma and rickettsia pathogens. Um, here is the, the list of projects that we are um, that we have completed so far. They are ongoing or shortlisted, uh, which give us uh, give an idea that uh, what what are the streamline of research going on uh, here. Uh, one of that that is risk assessment of arthropod arthro arthropod-borne diseases of one health significance, um, and uh, this scenario of risk assessment comes from the uh, uh, from the area of climate change, which is the that how the climate is uh, uh, kind of a uh, factor affecting the the distribution of arthropods in various uh, uh, climatic zones. Like uh, when we talk about Pakistan, the northern areas of Pakistan, they were uh, they are quite cold. Uh, in temperatures and uh, the uh, now but nowadays maybe after in a in a period of last two decades or so uh, the changes have been done then now endemicity of uh, the vector is prevailing in those regions too which is a kind of a threat for uh, a livestock in between those areas then uh, again epizootology of arthropod vectors in the various zones vector infectivity as i talk, talked about that uh, uh, various vectors are uh, kind of um, uh, carrying the pathogens to what extent then um, another approach is alternative control measures for arthropods uh, using gene editing techniques nanoparticles and biological control methods uh, one of the projects that was completed in collaboration with the university of southern mississippi was arthropod functional genomics uh, and then uh, in offshoot of that project was uh, finding out rickettsia communities associated with ectoparasites. And uh, uh, another ongoing project is on biological control of animal ticks using uh, sustainable alternative control strategies uh, using uh, uh, some nematodes and fungi, which are effective against uh, animal ticks. So starting from the conventional epidemiology, I, uh, there, are, there are some reports which are indicating the point prevalence and period prevalence. And then uh, uh, we have established in vitro and in vivo uh, models for uh, uh, characteristic efficacy against uh, uh, hyaloma anatolicum, which is the most widespread tick species in Punjab. Uh, so uh, we have tried to set up the model in a way that uh, we collect uh, engorged females uh, from the field and we allow them to lay eggs in, in our laboratory. And the, uh, so, so the eggs are subjected to egg hatch, hatch and then when they are hatching out, they are uh, releasing the, uh, the larvae and uh, then we can perform larval uh, assays. And then larvae are subjected to, uh, to feeding uh, on, on mice or maybe rabbits um, in a uh, in our animal facility. Uh, and then they are molded to nymphs where we can perform nymph assay. And adults as such are collected from the field to, uh, to perform various kinds of assays. So in this way, we have established uh, the in vivo uh, uh, efficacy trials of various uh, over-the-counter uh, in the uh, in the country. So uh, these are a couple of papers from uh, various uh, breeds, like uh, we have found uh, sheep, goat, cattle, buffalo, and even uh, feral cats and dogs, which are, which are sharing the common uh, species in our country. Um, Dear Sohil, Sajis, I am very, very sorry to interrupt yeah, uh, so, because of time yeah. restrictions. So, please. so I'm just pointing out, okay. So, here is the paper which I showed about uh, Mancera and Gilgit, which uh, showed the uh, endemicity of the vector in northern areas. Okay. So it's, I mean, it's open for uh, Q and A, and I can talk or discuss more on that, please. <laughs> 